The Hosea, maybe in a lighter form, but Reverend Boone, but um, he had a he had a great following, and um, was a was a good minister here. Uh, he did a lot of good. He had a, he had an opportunity. He took opportunities to step ahead and come to come to uh, meetings with these businesses and make them understand that there were needs in his community. So he really did fight for his community as well as the, the movement period. But um, Reverend Boone will always be remembered, I think, as a very formidable figure in Atlanta, as well as Hosea Williams, as well as um, Dr. Vivian, um, Dr. King, and let's not leave out Daddy King. Now, he, um, he did march with us sometimes. I think he was in the Selma to Montgomery March and I believe he was in uh, Washington when we went to the March on Washington. But um, we had some very strong people behind us, strong, some very good minds, some very strong minds behind us too. So it was very easy for me and a lot of my friends to, to feel the need and fulfill it, to, to go out there and do what we feel, felt we needed to do. And even today, we still feel a need. We, we are not through. The, the, the problem is still there. Voter registration is still a problem. Um, pe voting rights is still a problem. So these are things that it's time to pass the torch on. And it's time for our young people to step up. Okay? So we need, we need all the young people we can get. I've uh, recently started an organization along with a dear friend of mine, Lily Benitez, to um, reach out to unsung heroes. There are a lot of people in Atlanta who have never, ever had an opportunity to tell their story. And we need to hear their stories. We know about the Andy Youngs, we know about the Dr. Vivians, but we don't know about the unsung heroes and sheroes of Atlanta and other places. So we're, we're working very adamantly to get their stories told. And they can reach us through you if you will allow us to. Did I, could, I, could I take that opportunity to put you on, on the spot and say, <laughs> if you want to cut that out. Okay, okay. Okay. We are the Atlanta Unsung Heroes. Uh, we are an advocacy group for people who have never had an opportunity to tell their stories. Um, one story I'd like to tell you about was when we went to the Selma to Montgomery March. Um, Dr. King had left, and I kept saying, it's getting dark, and we need to leave. We were in a mixed group, and we couldn't, we couldn't get out of Selma. So, in fact, I insisted that if dark caught us, I wasn't going back to Atlanta that night because my mama told me, don't, don't let dark catch you. I believed her. Well, the word, the word was out. They wanted to kill Dr. King after the march. So they did get him on a plane back to Atlanta. He and Reverend Abernathy. But Andy stayed, um, Andy stayed back to see about us and Randy Blackwell. And I told him, I said, well, I'm not going back to Atlanta tonight in a mixed group, okay? And I was so adamant about it that we stayed. He said, okay, y'all stay tonight. And I said, well, where are we going to stay? It's so Dr. King's house. We didn't want to do that either <laughs> because, um, because of the threats. But um, we did agree to stay, and we were having dinner at um, American Legion, I think. Uh, some and um, Reverend B.J. Johnson came over the PA system and said that uh, Mrs. Viola Lizio had been killed, and along with Leroy Moulton. Well, everybody got upset, and they kind of said, "Well, how did you know?" I didn't know. It was just a feeling I had, and I just knew that if we went back through Lowndes County something bad was going to happen. And I thank God for speaking up that night because we could have been in that group too. 
When we arrived back in Atlanta the next morning at SLC, the next afternoon, we, by the way, we slept with the, we slept on the floor of the SLC office there, scared to go back to Dr. King's house. Um, when we got back to Atlanta, Leroy Moulton was in Atlanta, and we were so, we were just elated to see him. And he told us that the Klan had stopped them, had forced them off the road, shot Mrs. Lewis, Mrs. Lewis Young, thought they had shot him, drove off, and they doubled back. They doubled back. And when they came back, they got out of the car, took their guns, the butt of their guns, and butted them. And he didn't dare make a, note, a sound. So those are some things that, you know, I will always remember. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. Sorry. So those are, you know, those are some of the things that we've had to, um, had to endure, and I think I, I thank God I had the the nerve, the gall, as they say, to speak up and say I ain't going back to Atlanta tonight, you know, in no mixed group, and it saved our lives. So these are the stories that need to be told, and I know I'm not the only one that has one has the story to tell. So I encourage everyone to please, please come join us, and thank you for having me. Thank you. That was awesome. Oh, I knew you were going to be great. <laughs> I had to beg you. <laughs>